Now today we're going to be doing a little chat with Chuck. He is uh, an American hero, a U.S. veteran, <laughs> and uh, just probably one of the oldest people you're going to ever meet in your lifetime. So anyway, we won't discuss his age, but we will ask him a few questions. Am I correct, Chuck, to uh, go with this comment? You've been around here since you were a wee, wee lad, is that correct? That's true. Now I was born in the South, unfortunately. But I was fortunate enough to be transplanted from Chicago, one of the two Cook County hospitals, when I was couldn't even remember it. It was so early. Down here to the beaches, my first memories were Pinellas County beaches. Back before they had seawalls. Yeah. Wow. That would have been. Yeah. 1694. No, it was actually yeah. That there weren't none then, especially either, except for Fort DeSoto, maybe. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Didn't think about that. Anyway, mm -hmm. so um, in your years, uh, so you grew up on the beaches, not necessarily in suburbia like we I was a beach boy, yes sir. I right. grew up a beach boy. Now, growing up a beach boy, you're talking about uh, Pinellas County beaches. You mean like Dunedin or St. Pete or? Uh, south Pinellas County. Oh, so like past the grill, Treasure Island, St. Pete Beach, Beach, all that. Beach, Beach, that's right. Oh, uh, okay. My stomping grounds. Mad so Beach. when you were a kid, were the beaches like they are now? Overcrowded and too many rules to follow? Well, they had plenty of parking meters back in those days. Yes, they did. There was no lack of them. However, yes, the beaches could be full of people, especially on the weekend. All those high school kids or the youngsters like me. You know I mean, shoot, I was a water bug, man. So, at any rate, yeah, the beaches are great and tromping through the mangroves and stuff like that, you know, and snake hunting. Well, there aren't many mangroves down that way now. No, there's not. I mean, that's a shame. Mangroves are important for the ecosystem. So, you mean you're talking like early Florida, back when you could still get in trouble wandering around out there? You're talking about Seminole? Nikosuke? Well, you are know. you talking about. The Spanish? Well, if you're talking about mangroves, that means there was danger. There's still mangrove snappers. You got to be careful of them. They're out there. Well, when you were uh, a boy down, where, where did you spend most of your time? Which beach? Well, uh, my earliest memories, and in, in my I'd say up until age seven. Except for a year we lived in town, but so all the way up to say age six, uh, Paso Grill. Paso Grill. Right over so by that's the, like really far right south. Right over by the Donces are. Yeah, that's way south. And that's there, like there was plenty of mangroves back there then, I'll tell you what. You can't go much farther south without hitting the Skyway and going down into Bradenton. Well, it's a few miles. There's a few, yes, but it's not. You could take a boat and get there quicker. Yeah, that's true. So I'm guessing things aren't today like they were when you were a child. If there were mangroves, you were probably a lot more free to roam and do whatever the hell you wanted without oh, yeah. interruption. Or there, there was wildlife all over, including moths and snakes. There was a occasional gator. There were moccasins, water moccasins. There were gate there was uh, rattlesnakes coral snakes there was raccoons up the wazoo are you of the belief that most of those things don't exist down that way anymore because it wasn't conducive to the society they were trying to create well As that's one way to put it comfort wealth etc well you can't really go wandering around with your little chihuahua on the beach if there's snakes i got going a story to for you your, about a chihuahua because it was a poodle though Mm -hmm. Is that something we can take up on uh, the next episode? Sure. Or are you going to stick around for a few? Let me, well, I can tell you the shark story. It isn't long. Okay. So I was eight years old up on John's Pass fishing. Now, that's the original John's Pass bridge, not okay. the one they got now. Right. And uh, got myself the shark hooked up good. And so I'm running it down the uh, 
catwalk on the bridge, go across the span and then down the other side, get up on the piers down there where the party boats were, get that thing up there on the dock, get my buddy to go call the uh, aquarium. And the aquarium guy came down, he was there in like 15 minutes, maybe sooner. And I still had that shark up there on the pier and the aquarium guy came down and evidently he was some kind of a handsome, dashing looking fellow. This woman came down there and she was tittering and she was just all over herself about this young man. And at any rate, she's got this poodle, a little white poodle. <laughs> oh, I love what this is going on. It was already. a toy poodle. I bet now, it was. Now, mm -hmm. As soon as she gets there, the dog starts sniffing the shark, and I said to her, "Ma'am, get keep your dog away from the shark." Now, this is a little eight-year-old kid telling a, a woman who can't see me, let it, you know, because stars are in her eyes. Anyway, right. so that's that dog just kept sniffing. He started up toward the tail, and he worked his way up toward the nose. That shark turned, and bit him. His, hind legs and tail were sticking out. That woman dropped that leash, started screaming, and ran away. That's the funniest damn story I know. <laughs> That's hilarious because you wasn't listening. <laughs> the, the moral of the story, kids, is just because he's eight years old doesn't mean he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> Tune in next time. <laughs>